Good evening, everybody. My name is Gilbert Kalish. I'm on the piano faculty at Stony Brook, and we're very happy that you're here to listen to these uh, performances by the students in the, pro in the program at Stony Brook of the six partitas of Johann Sebastian Bach, plus a work called the French Overture. And uh, just quickly to say why we're doing this. During this terrible COVID time, we had the realization that all of our students were really terribly isolated, that they were not having lessons in person, that often they were not seeing each other or anybody else. They were indoors. A lot of them didn't even have uh, legitimate instruments. They were using electric keyboards, which is not adequate really for a pianist. And so putting our heads together, we decide that we could try to make some programs that would include a lot of the community that would be both interesting for them and that would be very useful. The Bach Partitas are great, great works written about 300 years ago by Bach. They're, they consist of many movements of dance suites, dance movements, different dance movements of that time that were not really danced, but that are in the character of those kinds of movements. And uh, if you think and realize that there are about six movements in each of these works, and we're doing seven works, so seven times six, we can figure out is 42. So that's something like 42 movements. And we have over 20 people that have been involved in listening and participating in this class. So each of those students gets to play a movement or two during the course of these weeks. Then as a particular bonus, uh, my dear colleague, Arthur Haas, who is the harpsichord teacher and in charge of Baroque activities at Stony Brook, kindly agreed to participate. Not only did he participate, he gave us a world of knowledge about these works, about the history of this kind of suite of performance practice of the time. And I'd love you to hear him talk a little bit about these suites now. Thanks, Gil. Um, I want to thank you very, very much for inviting me to do this. Uh, Gil, you're one of the great colleagues of my life, really, and I'm thrilled that I have this opportunity to work with you and the pianists. Who, um, and thanks also to Calvin, the piano TA, for setting this all up. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's funny. I was asked to, Gil asked me to do this, and I thought, okay, this will be fun. I'll just sit there like a fly on the wall, and I'll hear all this great music. And more and more, I realized that everyone is, or the students, and Gil too, and Tina as well, the other piano faculty at uh, Stony Brook, really interested in hearing a lot about um, the pieces, uh, the history of the pieces, and my insights as an early music specialist, as a, as a harpsichordist, and <clears throat> just watching the students, uh, listening to them, number one, and then watching them you know, see the questions forming and all sorts of... Uh, revelatory things happen has been really an inspiration to me. And so I've really enjoyed it very much. These are really very, very special pieces. And they were, I think they were very special pieces for J.S. Bach as well. Before this time, he'd written the English suites, he'd written the French suites, uh, but they're really sort of in an older style. And uh, not to demean them, but they were a little bit more inconsequential, really. And so he arrives in Leipzig, um, and he finds himself at, at the, you know, at St. Thomas, he didn't have as much to do as far as writing cantatas because he had written so many of them in previous appointments that he had in different parts of Germany. So he had more time on his hands. And although we don't know exactly when these partitas were written, they could probably have been written in those first four or five years of his tenure in Leipzig. Um, interestingly enough, he had never published any keyboard works before this. This is Opus 1, strangely enough, even though it's pretty late in his career already. And he took great, great care with it. It probably comes from the fact that his predecessor, Johann Kunau, um, wrote three or four sets of keyboard pieces and published them as well. And so he's trying to sort of match that. 
And he had a reputation of being maybe the, maybe the greatest keyboard player in Germany, so he should be doing it. Um, the suites are fantastic pieces, as you'll all hear you know, in, the, in, uh, in the upcoming sessions. Um, they're fantastic because um, they show in incredible sophistication of the dance music. Um, keep in mind that when Bach was in Leipzig, he also could go to Dresden, where there was a great court orchestra, and he could hear really maybe the best musicians in Europe performing dance music and seeing dances being done and hearing operas and all this. And he um, was writing very gallant music then. He was writing music that really could dance, although, as Gil said, you wouldn't necessarily dance to them, but they were honest to goodness real, real dances, and they really, they really show the style. And that's, that's the other thing about this, is that um, Bach showed his amazing sophistication as writing in French style in certain movements and in Italian style and in, in this sort of combination of them in a sort of a German style as well. And they're all mixed up, you know, fantastically. Um, I don't want to take a lot of time to talk, but just a couple of, a couple of more things. As you'll hear, each, along with all the dance uh, music itself, the Alman, Courant, Saraban, and Jig, uh, that is in sort of every suite, he adds other sort of, as he calls them, galaterian, galanterian, or other types of more lighthearted dances to sort of fill in, fill out these partitas, bourrées, minuets, passepieds, gavottes, they're all in there as well. And they um, are more lighthearted than the, the Alman, Courant, Saraban, Jig, and so they give us a little bit of sort of breathing space as well, and great variety. And then each of the partitas opens with a, a different kind of opening prelude type movement. They're all sort of his idea of what these movements are, pre preambulum, preludio, toccata. Um, the only one that's maybe really strictly in form is perhaps the fourth partita, which opens with a French, a really strict French overture. But they're, you know, absolutely fantastic, remarkable pieces. Um, and uh, they have an individual quality based on their keys as well. And just to tell you a little bit about Bach's organization for this, he thought this out so well in advance. The it comes from this thing called the Klavier Übung. There are four books, and they're sort of the summit of keyboard writing in the entire Baroque period, really. Um, and uh, the first book are the six partitas, um, which are really absolutely keyboard music, harpsichord music, um, keyboard music. The second book um, of which the French Overture comes from is, you could call them almost in an odd way, transcriptions of orchestral music. The Italian concerto is sort of like a concerto grosso that's made for keyboard. The French Overture is really a huge French um, uh, orchestral suite, like Bach's orchestral suites, an orchestral suite that he then transcribes for keyboard. The third book is this big organ catechism, and the fourth book is maybe the, one of the greatest sets of variations ever written for keyboard, the Goldberg Variations. But the key structure I want to just quickly mention, Bach goes through just about every single note you can think of. The first one is in B flat, then comes C minor, then A minor, then D major, then G major, and then E. So you can see how he fans open the keys, and then he ends up with E minor, and yet there's one left, and so he needed one more key, and there we have the French Overture, which is in B minor. So you had the B flat and you had B minor. Um, interesting, just to say one quick word about that, he originally wrote that piece in C minor, uh, the French Overture, and then just put it into B minor so it would fit his key scheme, really. Um, but they're amazing works, and you're all very privileged to hear them all on these several evenings. I'm looking forward to it very much. I've been able to get a chance to work with these students, and I've really enjoyed it very much. But they're some of the greatest keyboard works ever written, really, and we're all in for a real treat. Thank you, Arthur. So I think you all understand how much we've gained from having Arthur speak to us throughout these sessions. We started them in uh, the early part of the semester, end of September. Uh, and. They've gone every week, except for Election Day, on Tuesdays, and they've taken a couple of hours each week. We, we've had uh, each, each of the partitas played by students, then with comments from Arthur and from myself and from any students that wanted to comment. And then in third weeks, the third weeks after playing 
let's say Partita 1 and 2, we've had recordings from eminent artists of all kinds, harpsichordists, pianists, uh, from contemporary recordings and recordings all the way back to the 40s. And so we've heard a lot of different versions of these pieces. And one thing I want to stress, uh, this was not a kind of forum or set of, of uh, courses in which we were trying to tell people how to play things. It was to open up ears. Uh, and that's what Arthur did to discuss the kind of freedom that one might have with the rhythm, the conventions of the notation, the reasons that things are written in the way they're written. And it's to give people food for thought and to hear these pieces, both by their colleagues and by artists out in the world, to get a sense of the possibilities. And then now <laughs> they're on their own and we hope in, in a way that's more informed for them and that will give them more confidence to play these great works. So thank you all for listening. We really hope that you enjoy it. We've loved presenting these pieces and having our students do them. And I've loved having Arthur here to give us so much information. Thank you, thank you, Gil.
where is the harmony going? That's something you always have to look at. So I, I just like you to take that away from all of these, li all of these listening and and playing experiences that you have that you have a have to have a different way of looking at the music than maybe you've had before.